Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Fireball Mullet channel. I'm Stan Kennedy and in today's video we're back on the 01 ZR2 Blazer. Got some cool stuff coming up in this episode. We're going to be focusing on an e-fan or electronic fan conversion on this. Now, uh, doing an e-fan conversion, uh, this I'm going to go through each step in this build, uh, in this little project here. So it a lot of this is going to apply if you already have a blazer but those of you that don't have a blazer uh, the steps are pretty generic um, in terms of the different things you need to do here um, so i'm going to go through that and hopefully this will help you out Now, why do a, a e-fan conversion? Well, uh, you will pick up a little bit of gas mileage. You will pick up some performance. And I think in my case, it'll be a little bit more exaggerated. Uh, I think I'll feel it a little bit more because this motor is over 200,000 miles. So <laughs> I'm thinking you actually may feel a little bit more. And that's because uh, the clutch fan that's on these today um, has a parasitic drag, right? And so that means that as the motor's spinning, yeah, it's producing all that airflow uh, through, the, through the shroud, through the radiator, um, but that comes at uh, some, some power loss and potentially some miles per gallon. So there's some other videos that kind of go through that. It's pretty minimal, um, but for me, that's not why I'm doing this, <laughs> okay? Uh, for me, man, it's about this helicopter, I feel like, this helicopter sound coming from this engine every time I start to get up on the gas. And I'm like, man, this thing is just roaring. And this little 4.3 is torquey as hell, man. It's fun to drive, but it should not be like, I mean, it's just roaring. And I feel like a helicopter is like, I'm, someone's like chasing me down. Like what's going on here? So for me, man, it's all about quieting it down. And that's really the reason why I'm doing the project. Now, uh, the stock setup, is well engineered right they put a lot into it so if i can get at least what it was cooling maybe five degrees ten degrees within that sort of area as long as it stabilizes and it's still within that thermostat sort of opening range there uh, pretty close to where it is in stock then i'm going to call that a success and so i'm hoping that's what we get out of this setup okay um now there's uh the, the kit that i got is called ff dynamics and so uh you can go out to google that ff dynamics they have a website pick your year model and then they have something that can be recommended uh, for yours now what i did they had two different versions depending on which blazer but since mine was a zr2 i called them up on the phone uh, and left a message they got back to me via email said yeah for the zr2 a little more heavy dutier we, we go ahead and, and suggest the big 16 inch fan. So that's what I did, which is cool because it's actually only one relay that you have to deal with. You don't have to deal with multiple relays, cutting one fan off the other. I really like the simplicity of it. Plus the one that's on there today, and I'll show it to you because I've already got the project done, <laughs> um, is this guy right here. Um, so you can see the clutch fan here. Um, but it's about 16 inches so about the same size of course you're not going to have as an aggressive blade in terms of a wide blade there um, but uh, that that's the way that that current one looks so you can imagine after this type of project man i'm, I'm pretty excited and i'm hoping this thing works out i hope it stays cool i hope it gets rid of that roaring sound now you some of you guys you, with some of these cars, man, with that, with that clutch fan, you know what I'm talking about. And I think this clutch fan started going out because as I was going down the road, uh, come up to a stoplight, the AC would kind of warm up a little bit and I don't think enough air was passing through the condenser. So maybe it wasn't engaging at the right point. And as we all know, when you have the AC on, which here in Tampa, Florida, we run AC just about every day, baby. <laughs> You can see I'm glistening now and uh, I'm in an AC garage. Of course, I got the door open, but uh, it's humid as today. Okay, um, so we're going to be running AC. So 
the, the kit I got is FF Dynamics, uh, 16 inch fan. Now it also comes with a shroud um, that you can mount on the radiator, which is really nice because that has to create that pressure to pull to, for, that, for that fan to pull more across the radiator um, to do uh, more effective cooling there. So it's pretty interesting their setup there. Um, mine ended up covering about from the bottom of the radiator fins all the way to the top. So it was really close fit there. It really wasn't enough. Like it was exactly the same size that you would need. So, um, and then it's got some radiator uh, opening on both sides, which I think they claim that's, that helps going down the highway and that sort of thing. Um, some of these shrouds, high-end shrouds that you buy, if it covers the complete radiator, they gotta have the little slots so they can kind of flap open those slots when you're going down the highway. Anyway, uh, there's a lot of science there and uh, <laughs> shit that I don't understand, but we're gonna try this. I think it's gonna work out fine. Let's talk about the components that come with the FF Dynamics kit. Uh, in my case, you'll get a fan. Uh, I got a, and in my case, I got a 16 inch fan on an aluminum uh, shroud. We got basically a 16 inch fan, which looks pretty damn cool, man. They have this red cage, which I'm not a fan of, but uh, you know, it's it's supposed to be a pretty powerful fan. Really good uh, CF, CF, CFM, <laughs> CFM out of it. Um, and it also has an aluminum shroud to it. And it also comes with all the controller stuff as well. So everything you need, here's some uh, zip ties that kind of work with these fans. So you kind of run through it to mount uh, the shroud basically through the radiator fins, which is probably fine for my, my uh, application here. And this is pretty cool. You got a whole harness here. This is your relay. So in this case, we got one fan, we got a single relay, um, and then all the wirings, we got a fuse. And then obviously we've got power cable, negative, and a couple triggers. The first trigger is gonna be your thermostat or kind of your temperature. It has a probe that runs through your radiator fins. And that probe is basically, you'll, you'll use the controller and you'll dial it in with a little screwdriver to tell it what temperature to come in. So let's say you're, uh, thermostat's 195, we want it to come in around that, boom, I can, I can dial it in, right? Um, but the other trigger, and we talked about this, is AC. They also include a, a wire to tap into your positive side of your AC compressor. So when the idea is when you turn on your compressor, bam, your fans are on and it's blowing through that condenser so it gets the pressure right. Because you'll notice that whenever the pressure isn't right and air isn't blowing through that, uh, your clutch won't engage on your compressor anyway. Uh, so you have two ways of triggering it, which is really cool. And both of those, you know, obviously I'm in Florida, that AC trigger is gonna be the first one, honestly, uh, for the most part. So you get that controller kit, you get a single relay. Now, if you do the dual fans, you'll get two relays. Um, and then you can wire that up separately if you want. But in my case, a single relay, and then all the connectors. Um, I actually used some different connectors that were more heat shrink type stuff, uh, a little bit more upgraded connectors in the install here. But for the most part, you get all the basics there and it's a really cool kit, okay? So that's the kit really. Uh, and then also, he, not only the sensor or the probe, but he also includes, it, includes a threaded temperature sensor if you wanted to mount that somewhere like in the radiator or maybe in the manifold or something like that. Wow, look at that. Got their branding on it. Sorry boys, I like you, but uh, <laughs> I'm not keeping that. Um, and then what's cool is they have like this little rubber surround here to help seal it uh, to the radiator too. And kind of keeps those sharp edges from the shroud, from the aluminum and stuff. They already have like the little brackets here. I mean, this is really nice. Good gosh, really nicely done. Look at that, man. It's just all bolted up, ready to go. Now, this is a puller, right? Just like your stock fan. But if you let them know, they can configure it to be a pusher if you need it to be. 
Okay, let's talk about the install. So obviously the first thing you wanna do, pop open the hood, take that negative battery, undo that, because there are some electrical connectors and some things we'll have to do. Uh, after that, you wanna remove the top part of the shroud, which is also in my case, mounts the radiator in place as well. So there's a few screws up top, and then there's two screws on each side of the, if you look down on the side of the top part of the shroud, there are gonna be two screws, uh, or two bolts rather, um, 10 millimeter I believe it was, and you zip them out and then the top part of it basically comes out and you've got the radiator loose. All right, I'll go ahead and uh, get these bolts off. Look at that boy, we got a shroud off. I love these two piece, uh, cause you kinda got to with the fan being in the middle of it, you gotta have that two piece, so that's nice. Let's lay that over there. All right, I think what I'm gonna do before, before I pull, let me take you guys in there. Now the bottom part of the shroud, we're gonna wait until we get the, the, the clutch fan out before we take that out, okay? So let's go ahead and move to that. Now, there's a couple different ways to do that. You can go rent a tool, uh, because what it is is this fan, and I'll show you, it has a nut that basically is on, uh, you know, it's on, so you basically, you wanna take a wrench, maybe a tall crescent wrench, maybe you wanna buy a kit, but the idea is you have to break that loose, right? So you leave the belt on, you leave the belt on, and you hope that, you know, loosening that, a lot of guys will do a trick, they basically put the wrench on it, and then they smack the wrench uh, with a big hammer, and uh, a lot of times that'll break it loose. Mine was very stubborn. All right, guys, it's the next day. I had to order a tool because this belt was just slipping too much and that little whack a wrench thing, whacking it this way wasn't working. Uh, and then I ended up noticing uh, the tensioner wasn't look, looked that great and also the belt kind of looked a little stretched. So I just put a new belt on it, put a new tensioner on it while I was here. Uh, anyway, back to the fan here and that big ass nut uh, right there. Then I bought a tool, and uh, which is basically off of Amazon, and it is this guy here, which comes with the 32 and the 36, which I guess covers most of them. And then there's a small end and a large end. This is the end here you would use, and basically bolt it to the pulley there with two bolts, let's say right there. Problem is, I couldn't even break those two bolts loose. I don't know if they have blue Loctite or whatever in there. The van would spin trying to get those loose. Oh man. So I kind of abandoned that and basically went back to the 36 and I basically put it on there. And I saw this on a YouTube thing where a guy took it and I took out my Thor hammer here. <laughs> Um, but instead of whacking it this way, I whacked it on top while giving it a little bit of pressure, uh, you know, pulling it and, uh, just whack, whack and bam, it busted loose. So sometimes it's not the fancy tools, you know? And so now it's loose. And then you can kind of just spin it off. You can see there, just spins off now. Make sure that nut is turning with the fan. So it is a clutch. It is, all you gotta do, if not, you'll have to take the wrench and do 
a little bit at a time. But you can see it's coming off the threads there a little bit. So I'm gonna take this minute to ask you guys if you could do me a favor, subscribe to the channel if this content is helpful to you. I really appreciate it. Uh, it really gets uh, the message out there. Contact more Blazer and ZR2 and IROC Camara and F-Body owners, uh, very similar projects. So I really appreciate that. Comment below what you've done to your vehicle in terms of the cooling upgrades, whether it's a LS swap, or just going to an e-fan conversion like this. Let's get back to it. Straighten you guys out. Straighten your head out a little bit. <laughs> there we go. And it just pops off. You just pull it out. And that, my friends, is the clutch fan. So we got that bad boy out. We're not gonna replace that. This is going into the junk pile. Um, and then, like I said, next thing is, we'll get this uh, lower one out here. Let's pop this out. I don't know how it pops out. There we go. And the lower shroud pops out. I'm gonna pop that out. I got all the shrouding out. Mm-hmm. And now we're ready. Now, the instructions or the instructions <laughs> um, say to remove the radiator and all that, but I think I could do it with it in there. Um, so that's gonna be kind of the next step here. We're gonna get this thing in here mount it to the radiator um, I got enough space here where I could actually you know pull those uh, cushion zip ties or whatever those things are through here and get to it should be fine and now you're clear free ready to do your electronic fan thing <laughs> all right uh, I now they recommend that you pull the radiator out mount it. it's probably a better idea it's more easy to do it that way. Me, you know, uh, trying to get my hand up in there definitely was a little rough on the arms from the radiator fins and I bent a few little <laughs> fins there, but I got it all back straight. So it's a little more difficult to try to because you got to run these little zip mounting things through the radiator very low. So it's hard to kind of get your arm in there. So if you want, pull the radiator out, radiator out and fully mount the shroud the best way you want to do it. Um, in my case, I just left it in there I'm just gonna go ahead and lift these, I think, out of the way. Just get an idea how this thing's gonna go. Bam. All right, guys, let me uh, bring you in here. So, basically, I got this positioned where I wanted to. Now, it did come with these two brackets here um that basically they gave me instructions to drill some holes through this top part of the radiator here this lip on the channel and then you can mount the top two unfortunately this is too tall for this radiator and so i've got to actually the bottom of it is actually at the bottom of the radiator so there's no way that i can bring that up so i went ahead took those two off i'll probably fill those little gaps there with some uh, I'll try to find another channel like this uh, with some weather stripping or whatever it is. Um, so we'll do that. So the next thing is I went ahead, I'm starting to prepare. So I went ahead and started this and you just have to kind of be careful, um, figure out where it's going to come through the fins here. And so we'll go ahead and start to work that through. and. Uh, Start to pull that and that's actually going to be the thing that's going to hold this thing nice and secure. So um, I might, I think that'll be fine uh, for what this is because again it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be fine. Uh, we might try to find some other kind of bracketry to use but we'll see how this does. Make sure it doesn't loosen up and uh, we'll keep an eye on it. So that's going to be the plan for now. So I'll go ahead. 
Uh, there's a few of these to get in there. We'll do the top two first, and then we'll go ahead and do the rest of them. All right. And then we have these little clips here. And these are basically how these things are gonna tighten up. We'll just run it down over it. And these got like little pads or whatever. So they're basically gonna go like, here's a little rubber piece, and then here's the thing that secures it, and then that's almost like a zip tie, if you will. So we'll go ahead and secure that. That'll be our first one there. And it goes on like that. Pull that kind of tight. Like that. That's good. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to trim it off, but I'm going to leave about a quarter of an inch per the instructions here. So I'll go ahead and just leave about a quarter of an inch. And that's that. So we'll go ahead, get the rest of these on, and uh, got a, quite a few that comes with the kit. So we'll go ahead and get those in and we'll get to the next step. Go ahead and uh, put one on this side. Let me just make sure the bottom is in good position, which it is. It's resting down on the lip. So I think we're in a good spot here. We'll go ahead, push this through the hole of the shroud and just you kind of work it till you find a little a little spot in the radiator and you just kind of got to push it through there a little bit it's aluminum so these little fins bend really easy so these things go on pretty pretty good here there we go go ahead that on there like that rubber pad and then goes like that so the part that protrudes out is the one that goes on the outside and there's some like little feet here a little rough area that goes towards the radiator get that on All right, guys, I got those clips on. Kind of bring in here a little bit. See there on the back side, all the way down. Just kind of bring it around here. You see them down there. There's three on each side, basically. It seems like it's really secure on there. It's not moving at all. It's up. A, it's up tight against the fan. I mean, against the radiator. So I feel like we got a. It's pretty good. So. Like I said, just me, I kind of overdo something sometimes. And uh, you can see there, it's got a nice fit against the radiator. So pretty nice, pretty nice. Um, so I think what I want to do next, it's installed. Now it's all about the wiring and the controller and the wires. But the first thing I want to do is just, I probably should have done this before I mounted it, just make sure the fan's okay. And just uh, test run this, run the red to the positive and the black to the negative of the battery and just make sure we got some fan here. So let's go ahead and try that. All right, let's see what we got. There we go, we got fan boys and girls. Nice, blows pretty nice. All right, so I think the first thing we're gonna do is figure out where to mount this relay. I think I'm gonna mount it right up against the cow here. Get you guys a little. I think I'm gonna mount it right up here against the cow. You can see here, this component here has one relay, and then basically you have the fan controller. Now this also has, if you look right there, that little blue thing has a little screw where you can adjust the temperature is basically like adjustable thermostat, if you will. So I think we'll go and mount that there and then we'll just figure out, we'll go ahead and wire things up and then we'll loom it up real nice to look uh, factory. Um, but I think that's what we're gonna do now.
it has a main power um, wire with uh, a fused link going to, you know, basically your battery. So you want that going straight for the power. Got this end on. This will be big enough to go around this battery terminal here on the end. This is your battery wire here. And it is has an inline fuse, so we're good there. So I went ahead and crimped it, and then I'm kind of using my own connectors here with the, uh, they got a nice sort of uh, shrink wrap to them. Heat shrink, whatever you call it. There we go. Just like that. Fit right on the battery. That one's good, and I got the negative disconnected here. All right, guys, I wanted to give you an update here. Got everything wired up. Kind of wanted to give you an overview of how that went. Save you all the boring uh, crimping, soldering, all the stuff you do uh, that you've seen me do so many times. So, uh, so right now it looks like a mess because we're going to, the last stage of this is we're gonna put some loom, tuck it away, hide it, try to look as factory as possible but we got wires everywhere right now so i can kind of show you what's going on so anyway we'll kind of walk through each one of them here um first one is going to be the green wire here um coming off the controller basically that one i've got going into uh, if you look at the green wire on the compressor in this case in your case um, this applies to anything but just do a test um, with the multimeter and figure out which one is the positive. Uh, for me, it was the green with the white stripe one right here. So I just tapped into that, okay, uh, for the green wire. Now what that's gonna do is when you turn on the AC, it's gonna basically engage the relay and that'll fire it up. So that's, uh, that's the green wire, okay? Now, let's talk about another trigger, which is gonna be Basically, and I've got it hidden here because I put this back on, but I'm going to let me take this off real quick so I can kind of show you. All right, I'm back. So I can kind of take you in here a little bit more now. I started looming this up here, but um, basically this is your probe right here. Now, I'm not actually, I'm not liking it. It's okay. It's working all right, but it tends to loosen up a little bit in these fins and, because basically it runs through the fins here. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to keep it like this or not, but basically the way it is, this will actually be another trigger. So if you don't run your AC, if you're not in Florida, which we run ours pretty much all year, uh, so you almost don't need this to be honest with you. Uh, it's like a few days I don't run AC in this, in this freaking state. Um, but anyway, yeah, so this would be the trigger once it gets to it. Now, what do you do is... There is, I'll bring in here. Uh, I gotta bring it to the side here to fit you in here. But that little blue piece, there's a little screw there. And that is how you dial it in to adjust your thermostat. So basically what I did was I let it warm up and right where I wanted it on the temperature gauge to kind of turn on, um, I just started lowering it, right? And bam, the, turn, the fans turned on, so it worked great. Um, so I did test all this out. All right, the next uh, wire is the blue wire. I terminated that, I cut that because this is basically a wire. If you want a, <clears throat> a warning indicator like a LED, you can wire that. Maybe you want to mount it near the shroud or something like that, but I don't think that's necessary. So I'm gonna terminate that and uh, a little better there um, since it's not going to be connected to anything. The next is the red fused battery wire and that just routes through here and I got it directly on the battery. Okay, pretty easy. The next one is the orange wire and the orange wire is going to be going to the positive side of the fan wire. So here's your fan it's gonna be going to the positive side there. Now, the ground side, this black wire, actually I tapped, I kinda of cleaned off 
scratched off a lot of the metal here, put a little dielectric grease around it, or die. I think I said it right, Dile di dielectrical? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I second guess myself now. But anyway, there's a good ground right there. So that's for the fan. Okay. Um, then you have another ground wire that is right there. So that's for the relay. Okay. Uh, so that's your ground wire coming from the relay, which is the black wire there. So you have two grounds to hook up, one from the fan and one for the relay, okay? All this is really simple if you're used to doing this kind of circuit stuff on an automotive, you know. It's either positive or negative, really. Okay, and then the final wire is, I believe, yeah, is this yellow wire, which is the ignition on. Now, you want to use the ignition on because if you don't, this fan will run. Uh, this, this relay, you only want this thing to, to energize when the key is on. Otherwise, this fan will run when the engine's off. And, you know, it's, it's going to run down your battery probably. So it takes a lot of amps, okay? So now we got this yellow wire, and I'll, I'll show you what I did here um, kind of after the fact. Let me uh, just take this off for a second. This is basically your fuse here. And what I did was, uh, there was a, on here, there was one called ignition. Um, that one's right here. So I basically did a, a jump fuse here, put another 10 amp, because the ignition wire, you don't really need a lot of amps for that. It's not like it's got a big load on it. You just have to send it the ignition circuit, and you want this one kind of low anyway uh, to pop if something actually happens to it. So, did that, and then I kind of notched this a little bit so the wire come through, which I might need to knot that a little more. Um, so, yeah, there's that, and we just kind of route it there. So, that's all the circuits uh, it takes to run this. Um, so, we're going to go ahead, I'm going to get this all loomed up, and then we're going to test it. Um, Spoiler alert, I already tested it, it all works fantastic. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I just wanted to make sure all that worked before I got you guys back in here. So I'm going to get this all cleaned up, try to look as factory as possible, and then uh, let's do one more thing, though. Let's take a look at the mounted fan, because I think I showed you that, but just to make sure you guys are all good there. Oh, one thing here i got to show you. So the, the shroud is actually... This top part is actually what holds the radiator in place. So you still have to use this plastic shroud, the top shroud piece. But what I did was I cut off the ends here, or kind of the ears. And I kept this. I could probably just zip it all the way across, and you can kind of see the fans there. But I don't know. It kind of looks still factory uh, with that, you know. Um, so I don't know. We'll see how that does. But... Basically, we'll, we'll put that back on there, uh, and that's going to hold your radiator in place. Uh, maybe it's a safety issue, too. I don't know. Safety, you know, benefit, too. I don't know. See, it says caution fan for any dumbass that <laughs> doesn't know a fan's running here when they feel all that air <laughs> blow. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I'll, t I'll get you guys back when I loom this all up, and uh, then we'll go ahead and try it out, and I'll, I'll let you see it in action. All right, guys, went ahead and finished up all the cleanup. Put the shroud back on, nice and tidy. And so here's the relay. You can kind of see I got all the wires in kind of the GM style loom here. And just first glance, you can't even really tell. You just want it to blend in, right? So just walk your, there's the, uh, here is the ignition wire right here. So I kind of like to follow the GM wire harness routing when possible. So that just comes through here and into the box. And then all the power and everything else that's running towards the battery, the, the temp sensor probe and all that kind of comes all through here. Temp sensor probes right there. Uh, oh. 
And then I went ahead because there's this big red sort of uh, clip there that you guys noticed earlier. So I went ahead and just took some heat shrink and uh, covered that up and then kind of followed the, uh, the stock line here, kind of going around the throttle cable, being careful not to get it in the way of the throttle here. So I just kind of followed, again, the existing harness wiring and back up. All right, guys, it's, it's time to test it test this bad boy out and uh, the first test that I'm gonna do is basically go in and uh, turn the AC on and see if the fans come on right so the temperature still low everything is low so uh, the fans shouldn't be running when you crank it on and then when you turn on the AC the fan it should engage trigger that relay coming from the AC compressor and then it should start running uh, so that's the first test the second test is, okay, we'll turn off the AC and we'll wait for it to get up to temp right where it gets up to temp where I would normally want to see that maybe 185 to 195 where the thermostat opens. Then I'm going to dial in with that screwdriver, that controller and try to find the sweet spot where that thing comes on. So uh, you'll have to play with that a little bit until you figure out, you know, where you want it to come on and, and how, how it's cooling and that sort of thing. But um, in this case, um, it worked pretty well, okay? So once we do that, then we wanna go ahead, it's up to temperature. Uh, I'm gonna see if it maintains that temperature where it was before. All right, so we're in the truck. Yeah, I gotta get another switch here. This thing kinda broke off. So gotta get that fixed there. But anyway, uh, let's start it up. We got the temperature gauge here. We're gonna start it up. We'll first turn on the AC, make sure that uh, the fans turn on. So right now, the AC is off. So the fans should not be running. Okay, ooh, no loud helicopter, baby. <laughs> nice, nice. All right, so let's just verify the fans aren't running here real quick. Hey, no. Wow, you can actually hear the motor. But no, there's no air coming out of this. Everything looks good. So we'll turn that on. Oh, Max. That's hot. All right, let's see. Already, man, it's so much quieter without that big fan. Yep, the press is running. It's engaged, the clutch. And I can feel a lot of air blowing through this 16-inch fan. Nice. Woo. Yeah, you can see it kind of blowing through the motor here. Kind of got some good flow through. Maybe this is good to kind of keep this. Honestly, I probably could have kept the bottom of the shroud too. I don't know, but uh, yeah. So let's go ahead and uh, turn this AC off and then we're gonna let it get up the temperature and see when the fans are cut on. So let's turn this off. And the fan should turn off. You can see the temperature now is, normally it's like, uh, and I don't even know how to read this because it goes from 100 to 210. So I don't, know how to, I don't know how to do simple math here. But basically, it's right between the first and the second one is when it was normal uh, for me. So between this first little line and the second little line after this, I don't know, maybe that's 200 or 185. I don't know what it is. But anyway, we'll, uh, let's make sure that the fan turned off because we're not up to temperature yet. Oh, it just turned on, so nice i just heard it turn on it wasn't the fan switch so uh, i might have to adjust that thermostat a little bit higher because let me see here that came on a little early so let's do that so in the kit it gives you a little screwdriver we're just going to go right here and we're going to turn it up look the fan just came, fan just went off so i'm going to uh, so basically I just turn it and they say don't 
force this little pot, this little pot turn is what they call it, because it'll bust. Uh, so be easy with that. So right now the fans are off. I don't know if you guys can hear when, they, when they're off. Let's check the temperature, because I kind of want it to come on about when the thermostat, which I think is a 195, is what I would like it. Come on. All right. I think I want it to come on now, so I'm gonna turn it down until it comes on. It's still not on. We're just gonna dial it down a little bit. Oh, there it goes. All right. Perfect. I think that's going to be perfect, guys. Now, the biggest thing, now, they say this thing gives you better gas mileage, gives you a little bit more horsepower, and it's probably more, you feel it more on a 216,000 motor, mile motor. Um, so, you know, I'll definitely feel it more there. Uh, but I really did it because the sound was just insane i felt like a helicopter was following me the whole time man <laughs> i was like this is just you kind of want to let off the gas because it's just so freaking loud so anyway uh it's very common for these clutch fans especially when they start going out uh, but yeah that's great and so now it's holding temperature super well like i said i expect it to be that first between the first and the second one between this dot and the 210 here. Um, so basically that between the first and the second hash mark there, I think would be fine. That's normally when it ran. So it looks like it's holding the temperature pretty well so far, which is awesome. <sighs> um, okay, so we'll let that idle a little bit and then check back. All right, just a quick update. It actually cooled it down enough where the AC, uh, I'm sorry, where the fans stopped running. <laughs> I was like, damn. And it ran a few minutes and then, I don't know, maybe five minutes and then the, the fans turned on again. So man, this is working out pretty incredible, I think. I think this is gonna be so awesome. And right now that temperature is actually lower than when it normally runs. Now, when I run the AC, I think it'll go up some, right? Because you got the condenser that's heating up right before the radiator, so naturally, it runs a little warmer uh, when you run the AC. So we'll test that in a minute, but just trying to see like normal driving, which in Florida is hardly ever without the AC. And I don't want to say that too many times, but <laughs> it's true. Yeah, nice. This thing is just running great. All right, it's been running a while. That's excellent. That is really good right there. That's actually a little lower normal driving, but nor like I said, I normally have AC. So let's turn the AC on here and uh, figure that out. Let's put it on max. Get some cold air blowing, boy. <laughs> we gotta get some cold air up in this boy. It's like midday Sunday when this is filmed and it's freaking hot as hell, bro. <sighs> so hot. Towards the end of August here, we don't really get relief until about October, maybe. But uh, so I anticipate this thing to go up a little bit now that we got the AC on. So we'll just see how that works. Uh, so we'll give that a few minutes just to work and then we'll go for a test drive. And I can't wait to hear or not hear this big helicopter freaking fan on the front of the motor man i'm so so excited this is a big thing for me so anyway guys uh we'll get ready for a test drive here in a minute all right let's uh try this bad boy out pretty excited Woo. i just want to i just want to make sure that this uh this roaring is gone, man. I'm so pumped about this. I just can't wait. I have been thinking about this project for a while. I'm so
so glad I'm actually doing it. All right. Let's check it out. Woo! I can already tell, man. Let's get out of here on the road here. Oh man, this is nice. Yeah, just all engine, man. No roaring, no fan, nice and quiet. Yeah, boy. Man, <laughs> this is freaking sweet, man. Oh my gosh. Oh, I put my seat down. Don't tell anybody. Don't tell my mama. <laughs> All right. Oh man, that's nice. Now, it quieted everything down. And guys, I also put a quiet muffler and a new tailpipe that I ordered off of Rock Auto as well. So that loud muffler that I took off there, and I'll show you guys uh, the new muffler and the, and the tailpipe. I had exhaust shop do that. I gave myself a two year exhaust penalty. Uh, <laughs> just because uh if you see my channel i do too much exhaust stuff and i'm just done with it but they did i found a great exhaust shop and they did a great 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 job man i'm super happy with it so that quieted that down then i got rid of this helicopter over my head clutch fan sound and man now this thing is just i feel like it's like a brand new vehicle almost you know uh it's just man it's just the experience and driving it is like 60 70 percent better man i just love it um i'm personally not a v6 loud you know i don't like loud v6s um and i don't know <laughs> the older i get the quieter my mufflers get too i i don't know man but uh no but this thing is just man so we're gonna hit the road here in a second just see how this thing does to really open it up and uh man i'm i'm, I'm hoping this thing temperature is actually a little less than what i normally would see with the clutch fan so so far and i got the ac running oh man the power i do feel some power i feel some i feel a little bit more responsive whoa hold on baby don't get me getting away from me now <laughs> no i'm just kidding i do it does feel a little more responsive and like i said it might be exaggerated on a 216,000 uh 4.3 v6 you know then maybe a v8 or all right guys well that's today's video man i'm loving it man this thing is just coming around so nice i'm just enjoying this beast uh it's so fun i know it's such an older vehicle but man i just love driving it and this it, this just made it 50 percent more and more enjoyable to ride in so uh i appreciate it guys like comment subscribe and we'll catch you on the flip side